up guys welcome to my channel as you see from the title of the video i'm going to be giving some tips on moving and studying in canada as an international student what you need to know and you know just a few tips as an international student because i didn't have much videos or information when i moved here and no i've been here for exactly eight months and i know just a little bit and enough to give you some information before i start this video please like and subscribe and if you want to drop a comment you want to ask any questions you can do that in the comment section and i will reply as fast as i can let's get to it first tip number one i beg of you please 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 get a job if your student visa allows you to work in canada please work in canada get your sin number i beg of you <sighs> i waited until i want to say march probably to get my permit and look now we're in quarantine where am i going to work besides an essential service and people aren't really looking for people to work either because you know but it's important get a job if you can if your permit allows you to work please work canada is very expensive tip number two get good hosting try to get good hosting before you even come to canada from the time you get your acceptance letter probably even before because for me where i go to school um, when i came to visit they told me that i should have the same time i applied i should have applied for housing because housing fills up very fast i do not live at my college's residence because as i said it fills up really fast so i was put on a wait list so i now live at parkside there are other off-campus residences that you can live on i know that my residence mostly george brown UT, Ryerson, students usually live in this building. They also have two other campus, two other residences. It will not. Anyways, Campus One and Centennial, and those are good, two good um, housing options. And obviously, there are other residences out there. Um, I suggest if you do not have housing before you move to Canada, as soon as you get here, you go and talk to your school about housing and where you should live and different types of residences what may be best for you what may be closer and what may fit your price range tip number three this is important get good banking now obviously as an international student you don't want to be transferring your funds from your place of birth to canada like you don't want to be especially if you are here and you're depending on your parents to send you money you don't want to be waiting on that money all the time get good banking me personally i suggest um rbc why i suggest rbc is because i know they have a good student banking option it's really good i suggest it um, i see my friends using bmo also i don't know much on bmo so i can't really speak on it but those are two suggestions for student banking that you can try moving to Canada. This is very important. You can keep all your funds there. Your parents can transfer your money straight into that account and it'll be easier rather than you having to depend on them to send you money. Tip number four. Okay, this is important. I know I'm saying this for every single point. All these points are important, but use your student discounts students have so many discount offers you have discounts on tdc you have discounts on like stores you have discounts in like you have so many discounts that you can just utilize them and utilize your schooling discounts please you can get money off of shoppers drug mart because you're a student that's just a random store just saying before you get on me but you can get a lot of discounts amazon prime if you're a student here i think you get six months or a year free of amazon prime like utilize your student discounts because trust me they are going to come in handy and you're going to need them 
tip number five this also like comes into the student discounts as i mentioned before ttc offers student discounts now ttc has their own you get your ttc card and i'm gonna show what one looks like at the site but you get your ttc card and you put whether you're a student or an adult you know elderly etc etc please make sure that you get your ttc card transfer to a student because you're going to get discount because you are a student writing on the ttc okay trust me i didn't know that for like a good few months and it was mm. also utilize the monthly packages that they have if you are a person that you know that you're going to be going up and down during the day use your monthly passes because when you add it all up instead of just putting on money every time you take a trip or like every few weeks it's all is cheaper it may look like a big number but it's cheaper and you get more rides out of a monthly pass rather than just updating your card every week you feel me but most importantly with the ttc learn your ttc routes please please learn what is northbound what is southbound please learn lane one if you live um in the lane two area learn lane two learn lane three just learn your roads because they're going to come in handy i still get lost sometimes sometimes i go the wrong direction and i have to be like oh my god i should look at the board please look at the board and make sure you're going the right way please <laughs> I beg you, please. <laughs> it's not fun being lost in Canada. Um, also, obviously, check your bus time. Download an app to track your bus. I usually use Google Maps because it's easier for me. But if you're gonna take a bus, obviously, track your bus routes. Um, track what number you need to know for your bus. If you're going to take the streetcar, please memorize your number. Um, also, if you want to know the times of your streetcar, you have them on the pole and they tell you to text. They tell you to text the specific number in order to figure out when your streetcar is coming. Um, just utilize the tools and just make sure you run your routes and know what number is what and your life will be easier. It is better to take TTC. I started walking at first, but when winter hits, that was not working anymore. So we had to learn, we had to learn how to utilize the TTC. Point number six, I'm counting in sign language, so please don't look at me late if I can't count. Thank you. So point number six, um, get good winter clothing. This is common sense. You're coming to Canada. Six months, probably more out of the year. L let me stop lying. I've been here for eight months in total and it's still cold. You are going to need a good jacket and boots, okay? Fall, when it gets the midway fall, it starts to get cold. Get a fall jacket. Do not use a fall jacket for winter because it's not going to be all sunshine and all that. Trust me, get a proper winter jacket, please. If you're coming from a place that's warm, do not buy your winter jacket there. Please, when you come to Canada, get your jackets from Canada because you're gonna get the best quality and the best ones that are gonna fit you and the weather outside. I suggest getting, I don't wear these, but get the ones that are like to your knee. The ones that are to your knee, yeah. Um, I usually get like waist length because I don't like all that, but you are going to get cold. Your whole body is going to get cold. You will have boots on and your feet will still be cold. Wear like 12 socks. That's an over exaggeration, but that's just to show that it's going to be cold. Get good winter stuff. Um, I suggest winners in terms of like getting coats. They have a really good selection of coats during the winter time. Um, boots, uh, I just go to any shoe store really. Um, pick a good set of boots because obviously you can't be wearing sandals in the snow and get shoes with 
grip. Walking through snow is like learning to walk for the first time all over again. Get shoes with grip, okay? Invest in gloves. You may feel it if you're not gonna need them, your hands are gonna be in your jacket. It is still gonna be cool. Get some good gloves. Get scarves. Just be prepared, especially if you're coming from a warm climate like I did, you are going to need that protection. You hear me? You see me? I see you? Okay. Point number seven. Compare book prices online. I did not do this. Your school will sell your books for a good hefty price. Go online first. Check online for your school and compare the prices before you buy a book. Because you, you can often get your book online for a cheaper price and people are often selling their books, their older books. And you can get them for a cheaper price than from school. I'm not saying not to support your school, but we're living on a budget. We're college students and we're living on a budget. Check online and compare your prices before you get your books at your school. Point them eight. Okay, get involved with extracurriculars, school groups, whatever. No, me, looking for me in my program, I did not expect this, but I found some really great friends in my program. Um, I thought I was going to be the only black girl in my program. Um, surprisingly, I was not. So I made some good friends from that, but I also got involved with the Black Student Success Network at my school. And that has been one of the greatest experiences I've ever had get involved with the group especially if you are from a different culture trust me there's going to be somewhere at your school that has a group for your culture canada is very culture inclusive is a mix of cultures all around and you are going to find a group for your culture and a group that you're going to get along with and obviously if you're moving to a new country you're going to want to meet friends and it's easier to meet friends when you get involved with the extracurricular activity or a group Point number nine. Okay, make sure you're aware that your school gives you insurance. I can't speak for any other school, but as an international student, I go to George Brown College. As an international student, we are given a package, an insurance package. Please make sure you read and you learn all of the measures of your insurance because this insurance can cover dental, um, normal health problems, you can break your foot and cover that, fracture a pinky toe, like, learn your insurance. It's going to come in handy. Please, 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 please talk to your school association because they're going to let you know about everything that your insurance covers and what you need to know and what you should know in terms of getting money back for certain injuries or health problems. And then point number 10. Um, do not get caught up with Canadian life. No. That sounds, I don't know how that sounds, but this is very important. Canadians, especially those in college, love to party. They love to party, they love to drink, they love to be. Not all, but most of them, they love that. Do not get caught up with going to parties and hanging out and all that. Do not get caught up with that. There's nothing wrong with doing that every once in a while, but do not be doing it every week. Um, I made that mistake like when I first moved here. It wasn't really a problem, but until I realized that um, I wasn't, I would rush some of my homework. I still get through with my homework, but I have to rush it. And you don't want to be put in a situation where you have to rush and do all this stuff when you could just sit and focus. Your main focus was to come here and study and get your degree. Focus on that. You can still party because best believe there are student discounts for clubs. Get luck on that student discount point. But, <laughs> you know, don't get cut up. Especially if you're underage. Um, fake IDs are a big thing here. I am not underage. I am 19 and the age here. No, you're not. I am not underage, I'm 20. <laughs> I am not underage, I'm 20. The legal age here is 19 for you to go into clubs. So just letting you know, are you going to get involved in that party? Just make sure 
that you make a plan and you make sure that you have enough time to complete your other important plans before you go on day with partying. Um, a tip on partying, make sure you bring your ID. They often take government issued IDs. Do not walk with your passport, but if your national ID or your driver's license does not work, then your passport is your only option, but always walk with ID anywhere. Always walk with your ID because best believe they are going to want it. Walk with your school ID too, because T TTC, they be checking to make sure you're a student, okay? Because people be using student IDs and are not students. So make sure you bring your student ID with you at all times. Make sure you bring your national ID with you at all times. Have your ID. But I'm getting off topic. Just make sure you don't get caught up with the life of party. Um, I hope this helped. Wondering if Canada is right for you. Just make sure you sit down and really study if this is the right decision. This is what you want to do because Canada can come to you as a culture shock. There's a lot of changes. Um, again, I say especially if you're coming from a warmer climate, climate or an island, it's such a big culture shock. But best believe you're gonna find people immersed in your culture and they know everything about your culture people from your culture people from your country and you are going to love it canada is the best place for a young adult to go and learn and i would suggest it to anybody um but yeah this is not a sponsored video where the reno one is paying me to do this unless but and, <laughs> but yeah um yeah and thank you for watching if you made it this far like and subscribe if you want more videos like this let me know in the comment section also if you have more questions comment section i will get to them and i will answer them for you thank you for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next video